If you have a sharp file with a safe edge, you know what a safe edge is? That's just the perfect type of file to use in the corner here so you don't uh, square off your nice radius. This would also be a perfect job for uh, a filing machine. Back when I was in my prime at the high school, I had a do-all band saw and I had the filing attachment, the uh, continuous band filer attachment, if you, if you know what I'm talking about, but that would be great. But it was a big job <coughs> to convert it over from band sawing to band uh, filing so did I say band filing um, also if you've ever used a little Keller type of a reciprocating filing machine sometimes called a die filer that might be an application but I do not like those they're finger pinchers and you know they're only cutting half the time and uh, I just don't care about them but I, I did have one for a while and I got rid of it now I'm ready to take the screws out Looking good, all deburred. You know, I just used a brand new fine file to do some of my deburring, and it's just remarkable how well it cuts compared to the duller files that I've been using. And I ran the 730 seconds reamer through here from a Hobby Lobby tubing, so that'll fit just right. Next, off camera, I will tackle cutting this uh, as well out of here. Now, I could, I could drill a hole and saw that out with a uh, jeweler's file which worked quite well on brass but you know I would just cut uh, more crooked than a dog's hind leg so I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna take it to the milling machine and uh, using a small end mill mill that out and it's gonna leave me a radius corner but that won't hurt a thing because I made this a little extra wide compared to the flywheel so I'll see you in a few minutes I love these uh, Sterrett scribers and you know it's got a hex here and the, the purpose of that is that so it won't roll off the bench but of course it does roll off the bench because nothing is level in this basement but that's the second time that's happened to me and every time that happened it land I know I'm complaining here but every time it lands and the devil makes that uh, ha happen it lands right on the point and how can you tell well two ways one it's dull and then there's always a little piece of concrete dust on there so that was annoying, but I changed my mind, as it is my prerogative, and I'm uh, going to do this by another method, and you've seen me use the Adele nibbler before. The only trouble with this is you need a glove, and I guarantee a blister if you don't. And you need quite a large hole. So that's a half-inch hole. I thought I'd get by with a smaller one, but I used the Christmas tree bit and I got a, a hole uh, that is uh, big enough and I think you've all seen this in my other videos and uh, probably a waste of time to show you but it's in the soft brass each cut removes about a sixteenth of an inch so you go right on down the line and nibble it away so that's a nibbler now that's going to leave a pretty jagged edge kind of hard, hard to follow a line too these were made for the electronic industry when people worked on radio chassis and that's the thing of the past now because it's all a little integrated circuit. That's what it looks like so far and that took about five minutes so it won't take much longer. I just want you to be aware of different ways of doing things. There's so many different ways and often people say well why didn't you do it so and so? Well I can only do it one way and uh, or maybe I didn't think of your way but there are a lot of different ways to perform these metal cutting operations I wonder if any women watch my videos I hope so mission accomplished again the purpose of that is it's it's just a well for the flywheel now your flywheel might vary from this well I know it's going to vary from this you may need to do this you may not need to do that do this. I hope I made it long enough because it doesn't give me a whole lot of, uh, of drop but I don't think I need a whole lot. If not I probably can use the Adele nibbler even after a final assembly and the other alternative I have is turning the flywheel down to a smaller diameter. That's done. A lot of hand work today. A lot of hand work but I like it. As I progress along here I have uh, opened up these three holes, remember they were 540 and I opened them up to eighth inch 
and same thing on this side and I made uh, three brass studs here that's eighth inch brazing rod threaded 540 on each end and uh, that's going to be assembled like that and the purpose of these stays is to just uh, hold it in a position while I solder so that it won't fall down like a stack of dom dominoes <coughs> pardon me uh, furthermore these two will be permanent but I'll take the nuts off I think and solder them in this is just temporary because it would interfere with the flywheel and also the uh, tubing will go in there the main bearing so let me get that on and aligned and we'll take another look at it here's what it looks like so far just about ready for soldering but can, can you see how my stays here are helping me hold it into position one two three and then I've, I've got the bearing in there also to be trimmed a little bit extra length there and I have very carefully and methodically checked it with uh, my little square that way when I get ready to solder I'm going to use a new method for this I don't have to worry about it collapsing or falling or moving or any other other nonsense but I got one other final step that I need to take here and that is to clean the areas that are going to be soldered and I only want to clean that area and the idea is that I like to uh, keep the solder isolated to near the joint and not have it run all over the place but if you got a lot of clean metal that solder will run like crazy and hopefully I can confine it and make a neat looking joint and really just a little fillet down here full length and uh, do you understand now why I'm using the stays but I believe when I put the final stays in I will not use the nuts because that looks kind of cloddy this is the only one that's going to show up much this one being gone and this one will be underneath the cylinders so I got stability on this end from the uh, the bearing because because that will be soldered in place soft soldered what do you think of that there's my dad who was my teacher and mentor I mentioned that before and died when I was in college a lucky strikes murdered him and I'm still mildly bitter about that a wonderful man never abuse or cruelty or anything like that going on in, in our house all right what I've done now in preparing for solder notice how I cleaned an edge here and I did that with my little vise and I just got a lathe tool in there and I've set this almost like you would set a marking gauge that allowed me to shave it Oop, like that Let me see if I can do it on this side so it'll show up you see that I'm taking a little shaving off You know what this came from a garage sale and it's got my initials on it so the dead man had the same initials as me and that's neat which was also my high school and I've already done it here again the purpose here we got to have a clean surface for soldering and again the isolation factor but will not work I don't know but we shall soon see let me finish this off and start to get ready for soldering here after lunch I'm just about ready to solder and I'm doing this by a different method I'm not using a torch I've only done this about once before I hope it is successful but uh, this is uh, called a thermoplate and it's from a chemistry lab I believe it's third hand of course I don't ever get anything new so we got a surface here that's about eight inches square and on that I am going to uh, put the project and bring it up to heat now I'll determine the final heat that the temperature by uh, uh, and it, which is in about the 450 range by just touching the solder either on the plate or on another piece of copper here and then when I uh, have determined that it is hot enough I will introduce solder to the joint in a manner similar to if not identical to just this all the way along there I don't want too much it doesn't take very much that's probably a lot more than what I need 
This is uh, Kester 50-50 solder. That's half lead, half tin. Remember, a little lead won't hurt you. Unless, of course, it's a bullet. One of my viewers, I think I said that before. I thought that was kind of cute. So, uh, this will take about 15 minutes to heat. And I put, the, this is just 110 volt, I put it on top of these uh, uh, fire bricks here just to protect the bench, just in case. I will not leave it unattended. And uh, that's, that's pretty hot, but it's not a whole lot hotter than your kitchen oven when you make a pizza. I will also solder the bearing into it at the same time, but I'm not going to solder the stays. That'll be done later and probably just with a torch. And I've double checked it for squareness. Now this can be redone, but I sure don't want to redo it if I do not have to by just heating it back up and then it's just a mess. And I'm going to use soldering paste, just a little bit of it. This is such a mess to clean up though, but I do not want to use acid and their solder uh, or rosin core. This is rosin core solder, meaning it has rosin in it. It's really made for electrical work, but it's just perfect for copper or brass. Do not use acid. It's getting pretty hot. It's just about up to temperature. See that spit dance? Did you ever use temple sticks? This is the 450 degree one, so we're about at 450. It feels kind of melty. This is a 500 degree one, and it's not doing anything, so it's, it's a little bit over 450 right now. And taking a piece of solder itself, you see? See it melting? And of course it won't stick to this because that's uh, aluminum, thank goodness, or I can just knock that right off. But will it be, that's the rosin smoking. And there's a piece of, see how it won't stick initially because there's no, uh, it's not clean. All right, let, let me introduce a little solder to this and see if it's hot enough yet. It's taken the solder. Do you see that? Oh, nice. Real nice. Wow, that's flowing in there. I don't know if it's hot enough up here. Not quite, it hasn't conducted up to that point yet. If I can reposition this just a little bit so you can see that solder flow in there, it's almost amazing, really. It's amazing, Grace. See, I'm getting that fillet that I wanted. Now let's see if we got enough heat up here to solder. Oh, we do. We do. That's flowing right in. Now I'm pulling the plug on this thing. Because now I'm done already and I want it to cool. And now to expedite things, this is a chunk of brass. I'm going to draw some of that heat out. This is copper plate. Knock that off. Here's a chunk of brass. It won't take long for that to cool down because uh, these other copper alloys will really draw the heat. That's already getting warm to touch, and I doubt I could touch the copper. Very interesting. I hope this shows up.
Can you see the solder in there? And I want it to solidify quickly, which is what uh, this is all about. It's hot down here where I can almost This would be a good science project for kids. That's way too hot to touch. Oh boy, that's hot. That's a hot tamale. All right, let it cool a few more minutes and I'll get back to you. It's all cooled off. Take the Bernard and remove the studs. Save the nuts because they are hard to find. That's what it looks like on the bottom. It bled just a little bit there. I do not care. I'll take a file and break this. Where's my file? I got so many tools on the bench. But looking inside here now, I haven't had a chance to clean it yet. But you can see the solder joint and no solder migrated. Not that it matters, but I don't know. I just don't like it running all over the place. So the frame of Yellow Boy 2 is about done and I'm ready to start on the uh, cylinders but uh, I'm still going to put some permanent stays in here. I may do that next or I may not. Yellow Boy has received a little bit of uh, superficial polishing here on the outsides. I don't bother with the insides and I put a stay in there and uh, being the Loctite fan that I have been, and am for that matter, I Loctited it in just for a change because I didn't want to really introduce heat in there uh, and ruin my little uh, soldering joint. So that will do, and I allowed it to extend that out a little bit. That's just going to be the appearance, and there'll be another one, another stay here. Because I'm going to lose the stability back here presently, as I cut the, uh, the main bearing on the little marks there, can you see that? Because that's going to be the cutout for the flywheel. Now I would like uh, to get it fairly accurate so that the flywheel cannot move from side to side very much. I may still have to trim these, I don't know. I think they're going to be okay. And I put some bluing on there. And while that dries and while I rest, we got a nice day in Illinois for a change and I'm going to go out and mow the yard just for a little uh, change of scenery. See you a little later. I've got to cut out the space in this tubing for the uh, flywheel. And uh, a hacksaw? I think not because it's going to break, come through and, and bend that. I know it is. So. I know it looks like a bit of overkill, but I'm bringing the blue point into operation here, and let's see how that works, and I hope it does. Boy, that's loud. That did it. In order to get uh, the correct space in there for the flywheel to fit, the hub of the flywheel, I need to remove a little bit and uh, rather than file, I'm going to take it to the abrasive belt like this. I got marks on it and proceed to uh, take a little bit off each side so I'm pretty well centered. Uh, if you do not have a 2 inch wide or a 1 inch wide uh, belt center, be sure and budget one. Ask, put it on your Christmas list because you will love it. Like that. The 
flywheel fits perfectly. Like that. And you can see it's in the center. And there it is in the well. A little bit sticking out, not a whole lot. Perhaps perhaps uh, only an eighth of an inch sticking out. But I will have to inlet the wood. Alright, I've got the brass crankshaft in there. And this particular crank will be held on with Loctite, just flush. Just flush. And I've already put the crank pins in there. They might be a little bit too long. But I have to be able to disassemble this. And in order to do that, on the other crank, I put a set screw. Not much room there. It's a 632 set screw. Got the crank pin in there too. But this one will be removable. And a flat spot provided. And there will also be a flat spot to uh, hold the flywheel on there. You know, uh, after that last one, or during the last build, I don't know what I was thinking, but I made six of those. And I wish that I had made them a little thicker to uh, allow for that set screw that I just hold, uh, showed you. But a 632 fit, but just barely. But it'll work. And then I will have to trim the shaft a little bit. Also, for the other stay, which is going to go here, I decided I don't want to put that in yet because it may interfere when I go to drill these last uh, four holes on each side that are the ports. Because I typically hold it on a piece of wood or something where my fingers are, and that would interfere. So I'll hold off on that. Made quite a bit of progress today. Worked quite a few hours. Took a break to mow that yard because it was our, one of our first nice days in Illinois, northern Illinois, in six months. So I wanted to take advantage of that. And the old Cub Cadet fired right up. I've got this uh, blued so that the line or the uh, transfer will show. But what I really need to do now, of course, is to start on the, the cylinder. So i got two other cylinders to make. And that is rather laborious. And I'm not going to show you a whole lot of that. But since I'm making two, I plan to do uh, two of them together. And I'll show you some of the techniques I'm using for that. But overall, not too much on uh, building of the cylinders. So I will see you tomorrow. Remember, that's a half-inch bore and a three-quarter stroke.